it's a quiet one this one look only runs on manpower let's get it in the garage <laughs> what we've got today is the 1.6 diesel focus um 2011 12 model year clicking when you turn the key just click 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 not a lot going on it's been intermittently getting worse um, to the point now where it won't start at all so let's do some tests on it I think the starter motor's gone pretty much you know 90% sure but we'll do some final checks on it make sure that's what the problem is and get that changed over so when you come inside the car ugh. And this is the bummer, it's only done 45,000 miles. It's not done much, it's been well looked after. But we turn the key, press the clutch obviously, turn the key. Clunk, clunk. All the lights on the dashboard come up good and strong. They don't dim when we turn the key. So over under the cover we've got the battery. We'll just pop that off the top. And we can just do some initial checks on that, make sure that we've got everything we need. So the first we're going to check is battery voltage. So we put a meter onto volts. And this is uh, DC volts on the scale, which is the line with the wavy line under it. So we pop that on there and let's have a look, see what we've got going on here. So we've got a positive terminal, negative is tucked away, but this wire that runs down the back here goes to a pin. Can you see that? Oh, no, I can't see that. Let me just get that down a bit more. There you go. So it links to this little nugget on the bodywork there. So we touch that in there. 12.5, 12 and a half volts. So that's good. You've also, the power comes down this wire and through a, um, a series of connectors under here which then go down to the starter motor. So we've got to check that wire out as well. But what we need to do is just make sure that the earth on the engine is good to start with. That's gonna be the first port of call. So we'll pop the engine cover off, just grab hold of it, give it a tug. Just on rubbers, a bit stiff. So we'll click one on the positive, one on the engine block on a nice decent uh, earth. Like so, you see we've got 12 volts there. There we go. So if I turn the key now. So a good engine earth is basically a good bit of clean metal on the engine block that we can clip to. Now I don't really want to see any more than one volt of drop here. Yeah, so as I turn the key on that, it dropped to 11.4, 11.5 volts. Now, that's telling me that I've got a decent earth. The earth on the engine block is okay. I can volt drop this engine lead by connecting. So like I've got there, if we connect the negative lead to the earth on the body there and the, and the positive lead of the multimeter to the uh, engine block, and then I turn the key, you can see that went up to 12 volts I would know that I've got a bad earth but it's not it's just staying at about half a volt which is absolutely fine so we know that the earth is good on the engine right so let's get down the back of the engine we'll have to go on from underneath take the pan off and uh, check the connections at the starter motor okay, so let's go down 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 let's have a look Okay, so from downstairs, we've got the under tray here, and if we look up through the gap there, <laughs> right up there, it's a tricky little one. Just look through there, you can just see the starter motor. Let's get this tray off. So we've got one, two, three bolts there, three at the front, and a couple, one either side, and uh, we should be able to get that pan down. Okay, let's go for it. And so we've got a TX30. TX30 bits, um, Torx bit, 
Do, 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 do. Yeah, and I can see that in the end of the socket. Get it on the ratchet. Let's whiz, whiz these bolts out of here. Get this cover down off of there. So it's got two at the end. Just took those out on that side, on that side. One more on that end up there. Righty ho, Ooh, that's the first thing done. So what we're gonna do now, let's have a look up the back and check those connections on the starter motor. Okay, let's see if we can get you up here and have a look. Oh. Oh. Okay, so there's the starter motor and you can just see the connections there on the back of it. We'll have to get you up there and have a good look at it. Oh, oh dear. That's a flipping tight one to get in at. Okay, so basically you've got three connections on the back. You've got your main feed coming in here, which is from the battery wire. You've got from the back of the solenoid to the motor itself is this feed here, which goes down a little flexi wire that sits on the back there. And then you've got the small feed wire, which is up there, the little eight millimeter or 10 millimeter bolt. That's the one that when you turn the key, that's the signal that, that flicks this big solenoid to power the motor itself, which is on the back. So it's basically in two parts, this starter motor. This, this wire here coming in, that is the, the small feed wire to the motor. So we know that's working because it's clicking. So we know we're getting this solenoid is getting some power. So it's either going to be we've got a bad connection here on this second bolt, or the motor this this solenoid is jammed. So I'm going to try that connection first. As I'm as I'm looking at these connections on here, this the one out the back there. Look how corroded that is, and there's a possibility that's a dry joint. So if I crack that off and do it back up again, we might even solve the problem just from that. The easy way to show this, if that's a bad joint, normally it would spark when I turn the key. So let's see if I can get you in a position where we can actually see that and see if it's doing it. The little braided wire that goes between the nut and the motor there, if that's fractured, it definitely sparks. On this occasion, there's nothing, you can't actually see it. But that doesn't mean it's not faulty. So let's do another check. So on the back of the starter motor, the first one we're going to go to is the main positive feed, which is that one there. So we'll click that onto there. And if I clip it to the earth on the body, 12.34 volts. And then again, if we turn the engine over, if that drops off, if that goes down to zero, we know we've got a bad connection. And it's holding its own, holding 11 volts, which uh, that is just dropping because of the power that the solenoid is, is using to shove across. So the actual starter motor itself is doing nothing at all. And let's connect this one up to the other side of the solenoid now. So we'll see if there's any power coming across to the starter motor itself, which is this fella here. So we'll connect up to that one now like that. And see what's happening now don't forget we are on the actual outer bolt here so we might get a dodgy reading and again zero volts a minute nothing coming across there 0.9 ever volt so there's a little bit which shows that there is a bad connection there because it is it's gone higher so what I'm going to do is crack off, crack off that bolt 
redo it and see if that makes a difference. But uh, let's get a let's get a socket on that if we can. On there, let's undo that. Crack it off. It is a bit tight and fiddly up here. There's not a lot of room, and that Y keeps getting in the way of the camera, doesn't it? Sorry about that. But you get the gist of it. I'm getting in there and just slowly undoing that. It's a bit stiff, this. It's obviously got a bit of corrosion on it. This little ratchet helps. It's a little flex head on it, so you, it does help you get into these little tight spots. It's all on the fingertips, though. loosen up a little bit on top of it a little bit of lube on that a quick squirt of this teflon spray it's really good on these electrical connections and then do that back up again oh and when you slip make sure you don't smack the screen of your phone and crack it oh that was close <laughs> I'll we'll just do that back up again, just wind it up, keep on going, make sure it's up nice and tight. And every time we turn that, it just cleans that connection a little bit more. Oh, nearly there. That's got it. <coughs> so that's going up tight. So let's try it again. Okay, so that's that, let's try it again. Well, well that's the result, isn't it? So, that's the problem, we've, we've nailed that. We found out that those two connections on the back of the starter motor, we've got the primary feed coming in from the the battery from the battery feed through the fuses in the front of the battery and that comes down to the solenoid you turn the key it puts a feed down the small wire the primary wire which ignites that solenoid to click across and suppose, supposedly put power to the second pin the secondary pin which then powers the motor that secondary pin had got a bad connection on it and when we tried to undo it it was really tight quite quite tight and nasty um, but we managed to get it back of about three three mil, get some lubricant in there, and then do it back up, and it went up a lot easier because we've got the lubricant in there. So now we know we've got a great connection there. Bingo! We turn the key, the solenoid is now powering across the, to the motor, and it's all fine. And you know what would have happened if you'd have took that in the garage? They'd have charged you for a new starter motor when it didn't need one. Just a poor connection. The actual motor itself, because these are so reliable, these motors now stop start vehicle so that motor is built to do a uh, hundred and fifty thousand plus rotation you know uh, starts that they're unbelievably reliable but obviously now we can say they are susceptible to getting some corrosion on it whether it gets a small amount of water that comes off the scuttle and gets down the back of the engine because looking at this engine it's it, it's been stood for a few days it's a couple of days the car has but it's really damp it's really damp and kind of wet behind there it's not got any leaks on it but you know, great British conditions. They're really, it's really damp and horrible. And if that moisture is creating a corrosion there, you'd like to think that they'd have zinc plated or galvanised or done something with those those terminals. Obviously not. They they are corroding. So could be an issue for the future. Maybe yours has done the same. But we've saved yourself a couple hundred quid by not replacing the starter motor. Just cracking off that terminal, doing it back up again. Jobs are good. Un. Let's get this under tray back on, and uh, yeah, jobs are good. I can't believe it. That's really, really good fix. That one. Really pleased with that. Right, let's get this under tray back in again. Let's do it. Put me beautiful hat on. I've had this hat for years. All right, goes goes back with me a long, long way. How tatty it is! Oh God, he's a scruff. The bloke's a scruff. He just don't like changing his clothes. <laughs> I do get. I do like when. I get comfortable in my clothes. <laughs> All right, let's get that up there. Let's get that up there. Let's see if we can slide that in. Slide that in there. It goes forward and then the two ones just slip in there. They're two little 
to hold it in place and going like that. Get it centralised now we can do those. Do them bolts up. I'll put a link in the description to uh, any of the kit I've used on the job and then you can uh, click through and get straight onto that. It saves you uh, having to hunt around for it. There's like the ratchet, there's the Torx um, component. We've got um, obviously the 30mm socket. Yeah, whiz these up, get it up nice and tight. That ratchet done off, make life easier. What a great bit of kit. Right, that's that all done. Cover's back on. Right, so we can now pop the battery cover back on again. We'll get the engine tray back on. With this, you've just got to check that the rubbers are still in the, in the engine mounting cover there. Uh, because sometimes they do come off and stay on the engine, but uh, this is still good. I will slide that in. And just push it down into place. Jobs are good. In. Fantastic. There we go. Hey, what do you think to these? Absolute bargains. These are my new pit lights. Well, pit lights, work lights. They've got different settings on them. So you've got red flash if you want to put it in the boot of your car and you break down, you can use them for a bit of warning. But you've got two settings, bright, super bright, red and off. Two of these, a twin pack, 20 quid. 10 quid each, can you believe it? Rechargeable on the USB, absolute fantastic. Got these from uh, home base. They were having like a clearance. Little things you keep your eye on find. I mean, that's just brilliant, isn't it? I wasn't looking for them, but when I saw them, I thought, God, for 20 quid, can't go wrong with them. They're brilliant for working underneath the car. I mean, look how much brightness you get from them. It just lights the whole thing up. So, uh, yeah, it's good. The only thing is, I can see, I think, on my camera, it, they do create a little bit of a wave form. Mm. So, if it's crap and, it, and it's spoiling the footage, then I have to change them. But, like I say, for 20 quid, can't go wrong, can you? If that's been of use to you, if you've managed to do the same repair on your car and it saved you the money, then uh, thumbs up, well done, and uh, like, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Cheers, do you like my new mug look? Christmas present, even better. Get a nice nice coffee in there. Oh, or a cup of tea. Mm, it's not bad tea. <laughs>